with a, a video that's more than 15 seconds cannot be shown on Facebook stories or Instagram stories, and those are two pretty good placements. Um, they also recommend vertical videos or, or videos in a four, five aspect ratio. Um, so that's a consideration as well. But I also know that for the most interested people, long videos could work very well as well. So what I did was I have actually three different videos created. I have a three minute video, which is my long version. Um, I'll pull that up here. So let's see, we have, um, this is the long version of the video. It's three minutes, three minutes and 20 seconds long. It has some overlays. Um, I'm talking about what they're gonna get in the webinar. Um, and I'm gonna use that video. It's not in a vertical uh, ratio. It's gonna only show up in Facebook mobile news feeds and, and Facebook desktop news feeds and a couple other placements and the audience network. And then I have a, a short video and then I have um, a short video that's tall. So I have, I have a video, I did this on my iPhone this morning. It's 14 seconds and I recorded it. Um, real quick, I, I cleaned it up with a little bit, you know, I made the lighting a little bit better in Final Cut Pro. And um, more importantly for this one, and I also have a short version that's um, in a horizontal ratio that's also 14 seconds. So I have two short videos and I have one long video and I have captions made, okay? So if you go to rev.com, rev.com is really, really, really good. It's super cheap. Um, it's a dollar a minute for captions. My orders come back within 20 minutes, super fast. You could download the videos. If you have videos uploaded into YouTube or into Vimeo, they could pull those videos directly from your account and deliver them back into your account with the captions in there. So you have to really design for sound off with Facebook because a lot of people will be scrolling through their feed at work or wherever they are and they're not, um, their volume isn't on. So you want to have captions in the video. It's really worth the time. And, and sort of what I'm focusing on here, um, well, I, I run Adventure Media all day, so I don't, I'm not working on this stuff full time, but I really took the time over the last two days to make sure I had good video assets, I had my captions, I have good copy to, uh, ready to go. Um, and those things are, are important because once you, launch your dynamic creative, you don't wanna to touch it, right? You wanna give Facebook the best that you have and you don't wanna to touch anything. So just to recap, make sure you have your captions. So design your videos for sound off. Um, make sure you have a mixture of videos and images because videos tend to work much better in certain placements. I would definitely spend the extra time in creating a aspect ratio tall video that's four, uh, four or five aspect ratio. Um, it's very, very, easy. it's very, very easy to do that if you shoot the video on uh, on a phone, and you can create really, really high quality videos from your phone nowadays. And there's a bunch of these really cool apps, and also have two different video variations: one that's 15 seconds or shorter, and one that could be longer than 15 seconds if you have more to say. And then you're really giving Facebook a lot of options to play around with. Regarding images, Facebook recommends that you don't add images with text overlaid. Um, and there's one, there's a couple reasons why they do that. One is they just wanna keep the experience clean. They want the image to be an image and not be text. And Facebook actually doesn't allow you to show uh, more than, uh, doesn't allow you to upload an image that has more than 20% of the image covered in text. But also Facebook wants the ability to overlay their own text or text they take from your headline or your description and put that on top of an image. And fair enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload a couple of my, what I think are my best images that have text overlaid. And then I'm gonna upload a few images that don't have any text overlaid and see which ones perform better. Again, my goal is to give Facebook the maximum amount of options to not hamper their automated strategies and the data that they're collecting and what they wanna to do to the greatest extent possible. I wanna give them as many options as I can. So I wanna give them the tall video, I wanna give them the short video, I wanna give them the long video, I wanna give them images with text and images without text. Um, and you wanna really spend the time on getting this right for one ad set, because as we duplicate ad sets, we're gonna be using the exact same dynamic creative. We're just gonna change the different targeting methods of those different ad sets to see if we could jumpstart one of the ad sets with better performance. So I'm gonna go now and start uploading my assets, my images, and my videos, but I'm not gonna make you um, sit through this all while I do it, because it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so I've uploaded a few of my assets. I've uploaded a couple images, and I've uploaded a couple of videos, um, and I'm running into a couple of little glitchy things. So 
One is the ability to add captions, which for some reason from this creation menu, it's not letting me do, Facebook's not letting me do that. The second glitch is this weird thing you'll see with Facebook sometimes when you're creating dynamic creative campaigns, where you'll either be able to toggle between images or video slideshow. I mean, if you hover over video slideshow, you'll see this notification warning that says um, you'll lose your changes. If I, if I upload videos, it says you could use images or videos, but not both. So this is actually has been changed with dynamic creative campaigns. You could upload both videos and images and Google will rotate them. Um, if I'm sorry, I keep, I keep saying Google, Facebook will rotate them. Um, but for some reason, I'm seeing this older version of this menu where it's allowing me to upload images or video slideshow separately. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to quickly, um, basically exit out of this creation screen and I'm going to um, try to make more edits from the actual campaign um, ads manager backend. But I first want to try to click switch to cre quick creation and see if that helps me. So here I am in the actual back end of the campaign. And what I did was I went through the quick creation instead of setting up all the details of the dynamic creative from that original um, campaign creation guided setup. I chose quick creation. I quickly ran through it. Just you put in some titles, names of your ad set and your dynamic creative. And once you click save as draft, you're brought to the screen. And in this um, now we're in this area where you could do select images and select videos and you could do both. So like there's this little glitch going on in Facebook at this point when I'm recording this video, I'm sure Facebook will eventually fix it. But if you're trying to create a dynamic creative campaign, you've been following along with me and you're instead of seeing three buttons side by side, slideshow videos, images, you're seeing a toggle, which changes between images and video uploads, then go out of the guided creation, which, which where you're setting up all the text and all the images in that guided setup and select quick creation, create a quick shell of your campaign, save to draft, and you'll be redirected to the screen where you'll have the three buttons and now we'll be able to upload everything together. So I'm going to now upload my assets again and then we're gonna work on creating everything else like the text and the calls to action inside this dynamic creative. Um, so this is like par for the course with creating stuff in Facebook. There's always these little glitches and sometimes you need to find little workarounds, um, but I think that's a nice little trick. Um, if you wanna upload videos and images together in one dynamic creative and you're seeing that glitch, just go with the quick creation, save to draft and you'll be fine. Now that I've uploaded a couple of my videos and a couple images, I want to just pause briefly and come back and show you how to upload captions. So I'm going to upload some captions. So I'm going to go to customize video. You're going to click on captions and you're going to either generate automatic captions, which not worth it. Spend a couple bucks on rev.com and I'm going to upload my own SRT file and you have to upload it in a certain format. Um, so Facebook will give you that format. It's like under slash EN and um, pretty easy. So let me just select my file first. And it's this one, but I'm going to have to do it under slash E N U S I think, but um, Facebook will tell me what my file is. Okay, here it is. So file name dot E N under slash U S. So I'm just going to edit that file name and select that again. Choose my language as English and click save. And now those captions will be uploaded to that video and you click apply changes. And I'm going to do that now real quick as I continue to upload everything for these other videos. So I have a bunch of my creatives uploaded now. I have um, two images with text. I have three images without text and I have three videos. Um, everything is paused and ready to go before I start duplicating my ad sets, which the purpose, the purpose of which is to test different targeting. We're going to duplicate ad sets. And like, just to reiterate the whole idea behind this whole creative, this whole dynamic creative thing is to duplicate ad sets to test different targeting. It's not to test different creative because we have inside the one dynamic creative asset, we have literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, potential variations based on all the different video and image assets, the different text assets, um, so on and so forth. So um, I'm going to go down here and start adding text. So if you see here, the difference um, between this and the typical text of a non dynamic creative asset is once I've added some text, I'm able to add up to five different options. Now, you don't have to add five options. And unless you have a, unless you have a large budget, it's probably better to just start with two very solid options. So I spent some time yesterday creating a bunch of different text options. And I'm going to um, 
copy and paste those from a Google Sheet. So here it is in a Google Sheet. I'm hoping that the emojis will come in. And by the way, just a little quick tip. Emojis are very, very good for Facebook ad text. So if you create it in a Google Sheet, it's really easy to add emojis. Um, you go to insert special characters um, emoji, and then you could search for your different emojis over here. And Facebook happens to have a lot more emojis in their library, but um, there's no way to add emojis from this menu when you're creating text, unfortunately. So I'm going to copy add variation number one. And hopefully things will paste in relatively seamlessly. Okay, looks pretty good. So I want to just quickly touch upon a couple different things with with regard to best practices with writing, writing your ads, you want to try to put the link early in the text for the people who are just looking to click and are interested. So um, I'm going to put that up here. And I'm going to put the link again, down at the bottom, and I'm just going to clean this up. Another another thing is to create a sense of value without giving away everything. So for example, I'm going to I'm writing plus I'll be giving you six unbelievable bonus bonuses today just for registering. But I, but in this variation, I'm not explaining every single one of those bonuses. Um, the third thing is being personal and relevant. And that's a pretty obvious thing. And we try to do that with all our ads. So like, if you have a website, pay attention. Do you run a are you a freelance digital marketer? Do you run a digital do you run digital a digital marketing agency? Are you a small business owner with a website? So like, oh, okay, that's me, maybe I should pay attention. So being personal, being relevant is very, very worthwhile. The next thing is to is to avoid as much subjective claims as possible, and put as many objective things in your copy as you as much as you can. So for example, I write your conversion rate is probably one to 3%, which is just which is just average one to 3% is better than just saying your conversion rate is just average. I'm saying like, this is what your conversion actually is. And then I say, um, uh, at some point, maybe it's not in this ad variation, I should write that the techniques you're gonna learn will increase your conversion rate up to 65% on average. So like, if you're giving enough, if the more concrete you could be, the less things you the, the fewer things you leave up to interpretation, the better off you'll be. So you want to be exciting. Um, you want to have your voice, you want to have your personality, but you want to avoid anything subject, you want to avoid as many subjective um, claims, right? You, you there's nothing wrong, you know, people will say, Oh, um, it's just mark, it's just like sort of um, marketing uh, lingo to say this is awesome, or it's amazing, and you should avoid that. But I don't think it's true. You don't I don't think you have to avoid exciting speech. You could use words like amazing, awesome, sparingly, just try to avoid as many unsubstantiated superlatives as possible. So like, don't necessarily say you're the best in the world if you're not. Um, I could say I have 130,000 students, okay, that's specific. It's something that not everybody else could say. And lastly, that think about that idea for your own products, your own services, what could you say that your competitors can't? And I know that your competitors can technically say it, they could lie about it. But what could you say that's true, that your competitors can't say and be truthful. Um, and that is a very, very strong strategy for incorporating your copy. Lastly, I've talked about this a lot in, in other lectures, embrace long form copy. Facebook is one of these beautiful advertising platforms that allows you to write in long format copy, use that. Um, especially if you're doing dynamic creative, test a long form copy versus, versus a short form copy. Um, I'm a very, very big advocate of long form copy. I've seen it work in many, many different situations, um, beating out short form copy, but there's nothing wrong with testing. I'm, I'm even a bigger advocate of testing. Okay, so I'm, there's always exceptions to every rule and dynamic creative is, is an awesome opportunity um, to prove that. So I'm just going to read through this real quick. And that's basically what's going on here. So I'm just going to show you um, if we add another text, I'm gonna go back to my got my doc, paste that in. Um, and I'm gonna just speed this up as I proofread everything before I go into it. Um, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're back, I've uploaded five different text variations. And um, again, spend time on this, don't rush through this process, because you're gonna be able to build out huge campaigns with multiple ad sets, but you don't want to have to go back and redo your ad. I proofread all of them. I'm not saying that there's no grammatical errors at all, um, but I did a pretty good job um, just skimming through, making sure everything looks clean, and that the main message I want to give off is is in there. Um, 
So to preview different variations, you have this right side box over here and you could choose the different formats. So I could see a Facebook in-stream video, uh, stream or instant articles and all these different variations, but it's only showing me one of the images. So if I wanna see a different image, a different image or a different video variation,